withering and keen the winter comes, while comfort flies to close shut rooms and sees the snow in feathers pass, winnowing by the window glass, whilst unfelt tempests howl and beat above his head in chimney seat. Now, musing o'er the changing scene, farmers behind the tavern screen collect. With elbow idly pressed on hob, reclines the corner's guest, reading the news, to mark again the bankrupt lists or price of grain, or old Moore's annual prophecies of flooded fields and clouded skies, whose almanacs thumbed pages swarm with frost and snow and many a storm and wisdom gossip from the stars of politics and bloody wars. He shakes his head and still proceeds, nor doubts the truth of what he reads. All wonders are with faith supplied, Bible at once and weather guide. Puffing the while his red-tipped pipe, he dreams our troubles nearly ripe. Yet not quite lost in prophet's way, he'll turn to next year's harvest day and winter's leisure to regale hope better times and sip his ale. The schoolboy still with dithering joys in pastime leisure hours employs and be the weather as it may is never at a loss for play, making rude forms of various names, snowmen or aught his fancy frames, till numbed and shivering he resorts to brisker games and warmer sports, kicking with many a flying bound the football o'er the frozen ground or seeking bright glib ice to play and slide the wintry hours away, as quick and smooth as shadows run when clouds in autumn pass the sun. Some hurrying rambles eager take to skate upon the meadow lake, scaring the snipe from her retreat, from shelving banks unfrozen seat, or running brook where icy spars which the pale sunlight specks with stars shoot crizzling o'er the restless tide to many a likeness petrified. The moorhen, too, with fear oppressed, starts from her reedy sheltered rest, as skating by with curving springs and arms outspread like heron's wings, they race away for pleasure's sake with hunter's speed along the lake. Blackening through the evening sky, in clouds the starnels daily fly to Whittlesea's reed-wooded mere and osier halts by rivers near. Whilst many a mingled swarthy crowd, rook, crow, and jackdaw, noising loud, fly to and fro to dreary fen, dull winter's weary flight again. They flop on heavy wings away as soon as morning wakens grey, and when the sun sets round and red, return to naked woods to bed. Wood pigeons too in flocks appear, by hunger tamed from timid fear. They mid the sheep unstartled steal, and share with them a scanty meal picking the green leaves want bestows of turnips sprouting through the snows. The sun is creeping out of sight behind the woods, whilst running night hastens to shut the day's dull eye and grizzle o'er the chilly sky, dark, deep and thick, by day forsook, as cottage chimneys sooty nook. Now maidens fresh as summer roses, journeying from the distant closes, haste home with yokes and swinging pail. The thresher, too, sets by his flail and leaves the mice at peace again to fill their holes with stolen grain, whilst owlets, glad his toils are o'er, swoop by him as he shuts the door. Bearing his hook beneath his arm, the shepherd seeks the cottage warm, and weary in the cold to roam, scenting the track that leads him home, his dog goes swifter o'er the mead barking to urge his master's speed, then turns and looks him in the face and trots before with mending pace, till, out of whistle from the swain, he sits him down and barks again, anxious to greet the open door and meet the cottage fire once more. The robin that with nimble eye glegs round a danger to espy, nor pops from out the open door from crumbs half left upon the floor nor wipes his bill on perching chair, nor stays to clean a feather there, scared at the cat that slinketh in a chance from evening's glooms to win, to jump on chairs or tables nigh, seeking what plunder might supply, the children's littered scraps to thieve, or aught that negligence may leave, 
Creeping where housewives cease to watch, or dairy doors are off the latch. On cheese or butter to regale, or new milk reeking in the pail. The hedger, now in leather coat, from woodland wilds and fields remote, after a journey far and slow, knocks from his shoes the caking snow, and opes the welcome creaking door, throwing his faggot on the floor. And at his listening wife's desire to eke afresh the blazing fire, with sharp bill cuts the hazel bands, then sits him down to warm his hands, and tell in labour's happy way his story of the passing day. While as the warm blaze cracks and gleams, the supper reeks in savoury steams, or kettle murmurs merrily, and tinkling cups are set for tea. Thus doth the winter's dreary day from morn to evening wear away.